what makes this arguably the best super bike to buy in 2022. There is a saying that goes, win races on Sunday, sell on Monday. That said, Honda has not won much in the last decade in World Superbike. James Tosland was the last Honda rider that won the championship way back in 2007. And the last time Honda won the manufacturer's title was in the last century, in 1997. Currently, the bike is not the fastest on circuit, but it's no slouch either. Let us have a look at the numbers. Before we go any further, let me say that we are talking about the CBR1000RR and not the 1000 R. It is a 999.8cc inline four liquid cooled engine with 16 valves double overhead cam that belts out 189 bhp 10 more than last year's engine and 114 newton meters of torque that sounds like a lot less than other superbikes out there compared to the yamaha r1 or the zx10r both of which are closer to 200 bhp the 0 to 100 acceleration is three seconds which again one would argue that it is 0.2 seconds slower than any bike in the competition top speed is of course a mythical number of 300 kilometers per hour 186 miles an hour like any other superbike for donkey's years now the CBR also has two sets of injectors per cylinder for low and high RPM performance. It has a six-speed gearbox going through a slipper clutch that is designed for rear wheel hopping protection during aggressive downshifts if you're approaching a corner too hot. Wet weight of the 1000R is a mere 197 kilos with a full tank of fuel, which is actually astonishingly light compared to any bike in this category. Tank capacity is at 16 liters, which gives you a healthy range of 250 kilometers or 156 miles, depending upon your riding style. So on paper, you have a 0 to 100 acceleration deficit of about 0.2 seconds compared to other little class superbikes, but in the real world on the street, that means very little really. Whether you ride the Honda 1000R or the Kawasaki ZX10R or the Yamaha R1, you would not be able to make out the difference and you would have as much fun as any other. Just that the Honda, you would be paying significantly less than any of the other motorcycles. Let's have a look at the frame and suspension. It is an all-new twin-spar aluminium frame with increased rigidity and improved flex to give great handling around the corners. The new subframe is also lighter and works towards mass centralization. This is the lightest CBR that Honda has ever built. The suspension is where the Honda stands head and shoulders above the other little class motorcycles in this price range. In the front, it is a 43mm Showa big piston inverted shocks. It is fully adjustable, rebound, compression and preload. Front suspension travel is 120mm or 4.7 inches. Rear suspension is what they call a unit proling balance free rear cushion with a gas charge damper giving the holy trinity of full adjustability, rebound, compression and preload. Rear suspension travel is 138mm or 5.2 inches. Let me show you how I sit on the CBR1000RR. I'm 165 cm or 56 inches tall. Of course, it is an RR or a race replica. It sits very aggressive and committed. You're in a crouched, engaged position at all times. The clip-ons and the rear set foot pegs ensure that you remain focused at all times. But at the same time, I dare admit that among all the modern bikes in 2022, this is the most ergonomic of all. 15 years ago, I would have sworn by the ergonomics of my R1. But today, the Honda rules. I'm surprised that I'm saying this as it is well known that in the past I've not been a very Honda person. Seat height is at 32.3 inches or 82 centimeters. Perfect geometry to go racing. And it would not bother me doing long hours on the saddle either, just blasting through the country. Rider ace on this motorcycle is superb. It begins with a throttle by wire interface that works with riding modes. With the Honda selectable torque control, you have a ton of choices. You have a choice of five power curves, 10 torque control curves, three engine braking levels, you can custom program how you want your bike to behave while you're riding, especially if you're going on track. There are three pre-configured modes and two user modes that you can completely customize to your needs. You also get a bi-directional quick shifter that allows you to shift without using the clutch or the throttle. Let us look at the brakes. At the front, you have a four-piston Tokiko calipers working on 320mm dual discs and Minison calipers on a 220mm disc at the rear. But what is important is that this bike has lean angle sensitive ABS and you're getting all of this for the price of 16,799 US dollars, which is significantly cheaper than the ZX10R or the R1. The quality of suspension, the lightweight twin spar frame, the overall lightweight bike, and the amount of technical wizardry and rider weights that are built into this motorcycle that the CBR1000RR is arguably one of the most desirable superbikes out there and certainly at the lowest price point given the features. And if you were to take this motorcycle out on track, you would probably be staying alongside the R1s and the ZX10Rs and the Ducatis out there. What is your favorite superbike that you would like to ride or own? I've owned an R1 for the longest period of time. This looks pretty enticing as well. I'd like to know your opinion 
leave your opinions in the comment section down below and I'll be replying to your comments. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. Until then, ride safe.